Hey YouTube, uh, Alex here with a quick video, and uh, if you can't tell by the title, today we are just gonna be removing my clutch of U.S. captive born and bred Chinese water dragons. Uh, this is my first, well I guess I should say second time hatching these in a sim. And uh, you can see the moment they hatch and they wake up, they're really spunky. So this is the first one. I only have two other eggs left just because my female's getting old. Um, but pro tip for any of you guys breeding fast again with lizards, get them out of their egg box. You can see he is not happy to be picked up. Very feisty. So we'll take him out of there. They'll be running around in a few seconds. And what we'll do is we'll get him in the baby nursery and then you guys uh, we'll see the other two out of the egg when they hatch. Alrighty, so here we are a few days later. Sometimes um, when you're incubating eggs separate from one another, uh, as is done in a sim container, the eggs don't hatch all at the same time. I believe there was a study done on grass snake eggs that showed that more than likely the eggs feel the heartbeat of each other when they're laid together. As you can imagine though, in a sim container, it does not allow for that. Uh, so here's the second baby that hatched out. You can see he's just sitting there, he hatched out last night. I checked the incubator, didn't see anything, and I come down this morning and he's out of the egg. So this is the egg he's out of. One thing that I think is really cool about the sim container is that what it's doing is when the egg sits on the grid, there's more air around the egg that allows for uh, the egg to be exposed to higher levels of oxygen. So if we tear this egg open, you can see, look how empty the shell is, if the camera will focus on that. Uh, there's no yolk, everything has been completely absorbed. Uh, and so what this does is you hatch bigger, healthier babies. Um, this is also why I incubate at cooler temperatures. Um, if you guys read my article in Reptiles Magazine, and for anybody that was always wondering about Chinese water dragons, I always incubate at around 83 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, or roughly 28 and a half degrees Celsius for anybody overseas that doesn't use uh, the, uh, the the crazy system that we Americans use here. Uh, but what that's what I like about it is, is that the sim container technically allows the eggs to hatch faster, uh, but in the process, by keeping the temps cool, you're allowing the babies to more uh, readily absorb that yolk, which is just great because you want those babies to be nice and big and healthy. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the sim container is about nine inches long. So for reference, this baby who's resting here hatches out right at around like five inches or so. Uh, when I've incubated at 86 degrees, which I would never ever do again, um, they hatched out actually a little bit smaller and they took a little bit longer to get started. So don't rush your eggs, guys, whenever you're breeding water dragons. You know, some people say incubate at 85. Like I said I did it at 86 once. Will it work? Yes. In my opinion, it's not worth it. I like hatching bigger babies that are easier to establish. So we'll see what happens with this egg. And, uh, yeah, see you in the next clip. Hey, guys. Um, future Alex here. I'm currently editing the video you're watching right now. One thing I wanted to quickly comment on is the third egg of this clutch did not make it. It ended up being unfertile. I cut it later on. Uh, I'll insert a photo right now. You can see there's no baby inside it. So we're gonna now jump to the next clip. Um, we're, I'm filming this around a month after they hatched, but just in case anybody was wondering. Alrighty guys, so I guess to wrap up this video, uh, here is one of the hatchlings. This is, I'm filming this segment of the video actually four weeks after they hatched. Uh, so this is the first baby that you guys saw in this video. So coming right up at around a month old. Uh, it's August 1st today and they hatched on July 6th, which is when you saw the first part of the video. But uh, as you can see, even within a month, uh, they've are, they're starting to get the green color. Um, and so yeah, they're just, they're doing really well. This is just my typical nursery setup that I do using those Zilla front opening terrariums with the uh, Zoomed 10.0 light, LED, whole nine yards as far as heat and UV, which you see in my other videos. But um, yeah, that concludes it. So unfortunately um, this year, I said the hatch rate was low. I plan on covering that in another one of my lecture style videos that you saw I did for 2022. So expect that video to be out by the end of 2023. 
Uh, as far as the parents, since the breeding season's pretty much over, I've got Ozzy out of the cage. The nursery sit right on top of the adults. There's a female, Harriet. She just got out of the tub. So she's doing her thing. But yeah, there you guys have it. Um, honestly, I'm pretty ecstatic. The hatching rate could have been higher in my opinion, but you know what? It's also been three years since I've actually hatched any water dragon successfully, just because last year, 2022, was the overdose which killed all my eggs and then 2021 i uh, i didn't attempt to breed them because i had an internship so i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh as always feel free to like this video if you found it interesting comment what you like about the video and uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel to see more reptile related content specifically with uh, water dragons and possibly some new species which you may have just heard bouncing around in the background I'm Alex with Alex's Agamets. Adios.